All right, fantastic. Welcome back. You're still hanging out with us right here on Why in the Morning. My name is Brian Sapp and I'm so excited. Many thanks for joining us. But before we get too far, let's have some sort of interaction. And that includes our socials. And that's Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter as well. It's at Y254 channel. And you can find me at Brian Sapp 101. And then the hashtag is Why in the Morning. This segment is all about entrepreneurs. And today we're going to talk about how to create an amazing, bold, and beautiful brand that's actually recognizable by people out there. Of course, we live in a world where people are setting up a lot of businesses and especially trying to like get into the digital space that has taken over the whole entire globe by storm. How do you create something that will actually be recognized, appreciated, you know, attract clients, customers, even not only just business-wise, even as a person individually to a single individual best level as well. That's what we're going to delve into and much more. And joining us on set today, we have a very powerful gentleman. He is Mr. Moinesi Musala. Just a little bit brief or overview about who he is. He has been in the space for over 12 years as a senior management position in various uh, multinational, both in South Africa and Kenya as well. He is also a corporate lawyer and in communication, he's also a, a communication professional with a master's degree in international trade and commercial law from the University of Witwatersrand in Johannesburg. He also founded House of Major in 2014, a strategy and communication firm based in Nairobi, Kenya, right here as well. Aside from that, he has also developed and contributed to the personal brand of thousands of individuals from politicians, corporate executives, creative artists, and media personalities as well, okay? That's where I come in. <laughs> He's also a certified trainer, licensed by the prestigious Protocol School of Washington in the United States, and he's also a global leader in etiquette, protocol services to governments and corporations worldwide, also to leaders around the globe. Mr. Moinesi Musale, joining us live in studio. Welcome to I in the Morning. Thank you very much, Brian. When I hear my, my bio being read out like that, it sounds quite intimidating, but I assure you. Why? It is <laughs> why, why? That's you. That's, that's like your details now being shared with the public. Thank you. It scares you? It's good to be, well, it's good to be here. I'm, I, I just, I'm not used to, to hearing. Used to, to, yeah, of course. Know, People, people are liking <coughs> your successes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Be humble, anyways. Mm. <laughs> That's what I'm getting. But welcome. I, I understand uh, it's like been a, a period of very long time before you've been here. Welcome back. Thank you so much. It's good right, to be back. Let's get to know you a little bit. Like, how did you get into this space before we talk about how to come up with a brand that, you know, a lot of people can recognize? Like, how did you, like, get into this niche exactly until to a point you're brushing shoulders with these elite you know, people in the corporate space and uh, in other spaces as well. Sure. I think um, growing, growing up, I've, I've always been a, a people person and uh, I find myself in situations, circumstances and uh, jobs which require me to, to face people. My first job was uh, as a waiter and a coffee barrister in okay. Johannesburg. I, I did that uh, for a couple of months uh, when, I was, when I was very young. I was about 16. And I enjoyed the interaction with people. I enjoyed mingling with them, listening to them, watching their behavior, how they do things. Um, I went on to do promotions even as I was studying my, my law degree. And even in that, in that space, I, I realized that I, I do enjoy the, the aspect of people. I like watching how people move, how they behave, how they dress, yeah. how they interact, what's successful, what's not. What, what works and what doesn't. Right. Um, and then uh, when I graduated with, uh, with my degree, uh, I, I, I went full-time into business development for different, for different uh, companies. Uh, I was absorbed full-time in, 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 in one multinational and then I moved to another and then I moved to another. But in the same job, I was always interested in what, what does it take to make a successful uh, human interaction, whether it's a commercial interaction or a social interaction. Yeah. I've always been fascinated by that. It's one of those things that can't leave you. You know, certain people have certain things, like a musician has that deep need to, to listen to music or to play an instrument or to be involved with sound. My need yeah. has always been the same, that people um, fascinate me. Right. So uh, I, I worked professionally in, in different uh, roles, senior roles. I was, I've been a general manager, I've been a business development manager, I've been in marketing, sales, PR, 
anything that involves people and human interaction. Yeah. Uh, training and teaching as well has been obviously a very natural uh, step in, in that direction. And then in 2014, like you, like you mentioned, I, I went on my own and started a, a consulting outfit, which now does that for as many people as possible. Consults on how to make uh, their brand and their image, their perception and their reputation uh, something worth, worth, worthwhile. Uh, yeah. Because they say that um, reputation uh, can, can have far-reaching effects on how people perceive you and what decisions they make about you. Yeah. Uh, there's actually a book, The 48 Laws of Power, which says one of the laws is guard your reputation with your life. Right. So I'm in the business of, of reputation management. Right, interesting, interesting. I love those details because we live in a world where, you know, the social media, things are happening really fast. Somebody is doing content on TikTok, they go viral next time, sure. they're getting endorsements. Now, let, let's, let's use that example. For instance, somebody has just gone viral. They're now uh, being, you know, uh, being seen in, in, in countries like Turkey, the US, Canada, ETC. Mm -hmm. And then um, they've gained, they've amassed all these numbers and now brands wants to start working with them. But then they're not even ready to present that image of you know, what that client wants. Uh, for example, if that person approached you and wanted to collaborate something that would actually speak sure. for that client, how can they go about it? I think you've mentioned something very interesting, which is you get, you get to a point where you have a lot of numbers and viewership, which right. is very attractive to corporates and individuals who want uh, advertising reach, which is what numbers give you. Right. But advertising reach is very different from reputation. Advertising reach is a, is a commercial um, approach when it comes to getting your, your, your name and brand and logo out to as many people as possible. But once you've gotten, them, you've gotten that name and, 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 and brand out, does it do anything? Is there any decision that will be made after that? And I think that's where now the, the true essence of branding uh, comes into play. So yeah. you can have even a million or 10 million followers, but are you speaking to the right audience, to the right type of people? And uh, is, it, is, it, is it a brand that has enough of an impact to make, to make people sit up, take notice, and actually do something about it? Because yeah. um, what, when, whenever we look at people like that, they're referred to as influencers. Right, um, right. And influence yeah. is, is the ability to get people to behave in a way that you want them to behave. Right. But it, most people have taken the term influencer to mean someone who has a lot of reach. Right. So the minute you have a lot of reach, you're perceived as being an influencer, but the, t the, the, the correct term is influential. Right. So the difference between being an influencer and being influential is very different. Being influential yeah. means that you have a lot of reach, uh, many people listen to you, whatever it is that you're doing, people enjoy interacting with your content. Um, but are you able to influence people to behave and move and act in a certain way, whether it's purchase a product, um, uh, b b go to a, a certain hotel or whatever it is that, that you, you as a client want them to do. So my job is, is to try and make sure that there is, there's, a, there's the right mix of, right. Being, of being influential, but also having influence, be able, right. to be able to make that brand uh, have an impact and, and stick and be memorable. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't, if you, you know, there's a, there's a Kiswahili saying, kupigi ambuzi gitar. Right. <laughs> you can you can have you can have the right music, the right inst you can have every everything, everything set, set yeah. but yeah. it's the wrong audience, it's the wrong environment, it's the wrong wrong uh, time. Wrong time. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Right. So there are many factors to consider uh, when it comes to branding uh, and the promise that you're making. Are you able to fulfill it? Is it is it one that has substance? Is it something that is linked to the environment in terms of triggers? There's so many things to consider. Wow, I, I like that, and, and, and I think we can stay right there for a bit. Like, for, let me use, for example, uh, uh, as Y254. Maybe we want to, but we want to uh, adjust our audience a little bit. We don't want to just appeal to the youth, but we also want to tap into even uh, the older generation. Of course, they might not be savvy with some of the topics that we talk about that include social media a lot now. How can we appeal to them to a point? We're not losing them. Yes, we have them, but they're, they're not here as much, but at least we are appealing to them. How can we do that sure. now? We must remember that human beings are not, are not robots. We're not inanimate objects. We have hearts and minds. So yeah. hearts and minds is where you, you need to start. You need to be able to connect with people at an emotional level because mm -hmm. if, someone, if, level. if someone can feel and connect with you emotionally, um, then the logic will then follow. And then they will start to decide, is this content relevant for me in my space, in what I'm doing? Right. Most people develop content and do things uh, with, with what they think is best.
Okay. But branding is really about what does the other side think? What does the customer, what does the, the target audience right. think about uh, what it is that I'm doing? And are they in a position to interact with it? So there's, right. there's a bit of research that goes into that. Um, right. uh, very few assumptions. You don't make assumptions. You always try and uh, understand and have intelligence on, 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 the, on the target audience. Right. But then you, you also want to make sure that uh, you, are, you are aligned with the environment of the target audience. Uh, right. you are, you are, you're doing and saying and behaving in a way that is comfortable and appealing to, right. to the target audience. Uh, so if the target audience is to now maybe raise the demographic to uh, an, a, 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 a maybe an older market, then um, you, you need to be able to do and say things that, that, are, that are comfortable for them. For them. Mm. Make sure you're giving them, you're meeting that niche and that, and, and, and that target ma ma market or audience and what they need. Absolutely. Uh, there was a time I interviewed uh, uh, one of my guests here who is from the Media Council of Kenya and they were saying they were doing a research where they want stations to not only just give their audience what they need to know or hear, mm -hmm. but also like something that they can hold on to in the future as well. So I was thinking, I was looking at it like, uh, are we programming to just like also, like are we doing future programming or we're doing current programming where, yes, we are feeding our audience, this is, this is what we're doing this morning, but yeah. in the afternoon also you can still tap in and use it. So I really got lost there. Do you think it, it, it made a lot of sense? Yeah, it does. I mean, there's a saying that says, you know, if you speak to a man in a language that he understands, you'll be able to, to connect with him. But if you speak to a man in his language, you have him for life. And so you, you, you must be able to connect with people according to what they are most comfortable with. So if you uh, take, take an example of, uh, uh, let's say, a, a chimpanzee, a fish and a caveman. As, a, as just a rudimentary example. Right. Um, if I, as a, as a long-standing Arsenal fan, go to a, a chimpanzee, a fish, and a caveman, and I talk to them about our title chances this season under Mikel Arteta, yeah. all three of them will look at me like, what are you, what are, what are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, they, 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 can't they, relate. they can't relate to what I'm saying. But if yeah. I connect with a caveman and I start talking about caves and fire and Wild hunting side. and you know making tools, Okay. I, I then have, remember, hearts and minds. I yeah. then have a way of connecting with him, dropping his guard, and then now we can start to discuss, you know, things like sports and football or whatever it is. Yeah. If I approach the, the fish with water and, you know, swimming and currents and, sti and things like that, things that are relevant to the fish, to his environment, to whatever, then at least I have an ability to connect with, with the fish. Same thing with the chimpanzee. If I start talking about trees and swinging from trees and you know that kind of thing, at least we have some level of, of connection, connection right. and then the dialogue can follow because you know, we're, everything starts and ends with communication. Right. Etiquette is how you make people feel comfortable with you. So etiquette is just oh. the beginning. Right. And the etiquette of a caveman is not the etiquette of a fish, is not the etiquette of a chimpanzee. Right. E every person has what they need to feel comfortable. Right. When in Rome, do as yeah. the Romans. You might yeah. want to come and say, well, we want to be dynamic and revolutionary and change the game and be disruptive and all of these things that are very nice catchwords. But at the yeah. end of the day, people like to do what people like to do and they like to feel comfortable where they like to feel comfortable. So yeah. it's very important that you do things that are not too far, too far removed from what they are and what they know, but also yeah. if you want to influence them and tilt them to a different side, start yeah. where they are instead of yeah. trying to come from the outside in, start from the inside out. Yeah, this has reminded me of, you know, the Cardi B and the rest of the musicians who are like, you'll hear a lot of people gravitate towards her music and you'll hear somebody from a religious setting say, no, you can't listen to that kind of music because sure. it doesn't resonate with our value system. Now, let, let's, let's come back to now a company, from a company perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to attract numbers, but then we live in a world where there's, uh, I'll say celebrities are being used to influence and I love the fact that you mentioned there's a difference between influencer and influential. Now, uh, if, you are, if you were to bring an influencer, for mm -hmm. example, uh, or somebody who's influential, what are some of the things that they should be briefed on before they take up that brand? Because everybody wants numbers, even stations, uh, not just stations, even individuals. Sure. Everyone wants to have 100,000 followers everywhere on social media, at least. You know, it makes them, you know, uh, influential it, yeah exactly <laughs> for example if, if they were to do that what are some of the things that they should consider <clears throat> I think always know what, what where you're going and what you want okay. most people um, build the plane while it's flying they, they they start with with 
I, I, I know I need this. But if you actually delve down, you ask, why? Why do you need it? Why right. do you need this influencer? Oh, because they have numbers and they will help us grow. Okay, but why? Right. You know, the, the why has to Good question. the why yeah. has to be answered first, right. because the, the the end game starts with with the objective. What are you trying to accomplish? If you if you can go into the future when all is said and done, once you have those hundred thousand followers, it's not just about the followers. What are you doing? What is what is the station doing? What is the business doing at a hundred thousand? What are they actually accomplishing? What is the hundred thousand for? You know, right. and if you start with that in mind, then you can now start to build backwards and start to put in place uh, certain strategies and, 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 and elements and, and components of which this influencer is just one element of that. It has to be a holistic strategy. Um, it, the, people make the mistake of leaning so much on an influencer, thinking that they are going to take you to the promised land. No, they are a tool. <clears throat> they are, they are uh, a, an, an, a, a component of a, of a much bigger machinery. Yeah. Uh, but you have to be very clear from your business, from your objective, what do you want to accomplish right at the end? Yeah. Um, and then the, 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 there's a very famous book by, by this guy. He's quite revolutionary in the, in the field of marketing and, and, and people, with Simon Sinek. He says, start with the why. Start okay. with the why. Why? What's the whole point of what I'm yeah. doing? Why do I need the numbers? Why do I yeah. need the numbers? Exactly. What is it for? There's a, uh, when, you, when you talk about root cause analysis, where you ask why five times, by yeah. the fifth why, you will get to really understand truly what is the need that we're trying to accomplish. Right. But if it's just very surface, if it's just a very Shallow, surface you know. consideration because someone said that it's a good idea, I think it's a good yeah. idea to have this influencer. You see, they have a million followers. If we get yeah. them, at least we'll be able to get 50,000. No, right. it doesn't work. That like should that. not be a part of the No, reason. absolutely not. Yeah. This influencer got to where they got because of their content, because of their demographic, because of what they are doing. Right. And they're very targeted and they know what their why is. If right. your why does not match the influencer's why, then forget about it. Right. So as you're picking an influencer, you must be able to understand that this person is speaking to the same people that I'm speaking to, right. that I want to speak to. And the reason, the reason that I want to speak to them needs to be aligned to the reason why this influencer is speaking to them as well. Right. Before we, we come back now to an individual perspective who wants to shine and have that visible, bold brand. Now, let's talk about how marketing plays a huge role in propelling a brand. And uh, I'd really like you to talk about how uh, some of the strategies somebody can use to ensure that, you know, because, uh, of course, stunts, I've seen celebrities do a lot of stunts, like somebody went at a spa, they pretended like somebody was cheating, and then it was all dramatic, and then in the end, at he come to this spa at 7 p.m., I'm like, what, you used violence to tell us that you can come to this sure. spa? Like, <clears throat> was there any other option like you guys would have used to, you know, create visibility for it? So please talk about how that can be, you know, incorporated, especially marketing. The word market is a place where buyers and sellers meet. Right. So marketing is the business of bringing buyers and sellers together. That's it. Right. As long as the buyer comes and the seller comes, you have achieved marketing. Once these two people meet and they connect, then that's what you have achieved. So if in, that, in that example that you gave, if that's what it took to bring the buyers and the sellers together, then that's marketing. Right. That's, a, that's, a, that's an element of marketing. And so you know, if, you are, if, if, you are, if you're interested in marketing, you need to figure out what will, what will it take to bring a buyer here? What will it bring to, take to bring a seller to the same space? No. Uh, and once they meet, um, can we achieve now the, the objective of them meeting, no. which is the sale? Okay. Uh, so, so, you know, you've, you've mentioned an example which perhaps you are not comfortable with because maybe you are not the target. Right. It's not for you. Right. And this is what we must realize, is that um, m marketing and branding is very specific. It's target specific. Right. There will be people who will be for Cardi B and there will be people who will not be for Cardi B. Right. There will be people who will be for Donald Trump and there will be people who will not be for Donald Trump. Right. Yesterday our, our country was at a standstill because there are people on either, either side of the divide. Um, yeah. And, and they, they believe and they resonate with, with different ideologies from different people. Right. Uh, and and, and your, your market is your market and you have to be clear on, on the type of, of individual, whether it's, it's in terms of age, right. uh, level of income, level of education, status, preference, you know, there's, so many, there's the so many factors. They call it LSM, living standards metrics. There's so many factors right. mm -hmm. to consider when you're, when you're, when you're looking at um, who, who, who would best resonate with your brand. So it's not a one size fits all. If yeah. you as an organization or a company want to do something, then, then you must be very clear who are my people? And then even segment them even further. You can have primary, secondary, and tertiary if you want. Right. Yep. 
Interesting. Now, from an individual's perspective, uh, somebody wants, oh, let me use myself. I come to you for consultants and I tell you, hey, when I see me, I want the visibility, the wild one. Like, sure. I want to post a photo and Aziad is liking it. Everyone who is influential, <clears throat> you know, like you said, sure. is liking the photos. I, I, is it right to do that? And, and, and is it possible, first of all? Is it right? Uh, yeah. I guess. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think there are any laws against, against doing that. I think um, you, you, depending, again, like I told you, what is it for? Right. For what? For what? What's the purpose? Yeah, maybe I say uh, <laughs> there's there's some some target now target audience. There's some corporate attention I want to get, or okay. there's some people want them to see my work, so that maybe next time we are networking, we are interacting, working together. So that you what see, can I've happen? Already need, I've already need. But you need to go. Region. It needs to go even further. It needs to go even further. Yeah, it needs to go even further. Right. So that what can happen? You know, right. it, we leave it here at very surface, and yeah. then we do things, and, and and then it's piecemeal. It's like saying I want a cake, and yeah. then I get the flour. Yeah. Or I want to be recognized by the president, and then? Yeah, so that, that in, in the, if, if I take the analogy of, of I want a cake, a cake has so many ingredients. There's flour, right. eggs, sugar, yeast, milk, water, and so on. Okay. But you taking a picture, is just, it's just one ingredient. Right. And, and, and what's the cake for? Is it for a birthday? Is it for yourself? Is it just because you want to make? What, what is the purpose of it? So right. once you understand what the purpose is, then now you, you set around putting um, uh, the, the, the things together. You've mentioned, you've mentioned one influencer. You've mentioned the president, for example. Right. What is the, if you look at the example of the fish, the chimpanzee, and the caveman, right. you, know, you, you, you speak to hearts and minds. Eh? Right. What, what does the caveman care about? What does the chimpanzee care about? What does the fish care about? So right. similarly, what does the president care about? Right. Yeah. What are you doing to, to be in the space and in the environment the and in the trigger set of, of, the of, of the president? Right. And then once you, once you understand that, now you work your way backwards. And you, under, you ask yourself, how many trigger sets does this, does this person have? Can I, in, can I be there with, with all of them? Can my content at least touch as many of these trigger sets as possible? Right. And then once that happens, what next? What do I do next? Because once he is triggered, once he sees you, now what? Yeah. And then, and then you, you, he's seen you. Do yeah. you have a plan of, of what you're going to do yeah. after that? You, you, yeah. get, you get my point. Most people, right. once you've been recognized and you've been seen, yeah. that it and stops. Then what? It, then yeah. what? You know? Right. You can have all the numbers of, of all the famous people and the elite people, but what are you doing with it? Right. You know, are you able to capitalize on it and actually move it to something that actually. Or even make is, money. Because it's tangible. Yeah, if it's making money, money is your yeah. objective, then absolutely. Right. Yeah. Because, uh, like I said before, we live in a world where everybody wants to come on Instagram, go live. And speaking of that, uh, those, I don't want to mention her name because you're having a very serious conversation here. She, during the COVID time, she went on, did some two, three things, and then Tori Lenz recognized her. And then uh, recently, we've seen her, she's getting a lot of recognition. Even at some point, she mentioned PDD, you know, or Pad Puff Daddy recognized her. You know, getting that attention. Do you feel like, you know, uh, it also reminded me of reputation. Do you feel like, for example, if, an inf if a product or uh, an advertiser wanted to come and approach uh, such a person, I don't know if it, they're already a brand, it's either maybe they are gravitating towards that kind of behavior, like coming on Instagram, doing some two, three things, and then you go viral. So is it because they're gravitating towards that kind of reputation? So there are so they're, they're, they're certain things that, that every brand needs to understand. We call them brand vitals. Right. Uh, and vitals is an acronym. V is values. So what are your values as a brand, as a person, as a company, as an organization? And, you know, your values are your non-negotiables. Are you willing to be associated with a certain group or a certain person or a certain individual? No. And because, you, because, you, because by association, you're kind of endorsing uh, the values, which is fine. And if, and if those are your values, then that's okay. Right. Um, then you have interests, which is what, what, is this, what, is you, what are you interested in? Right. Uh, what, what type of personality are you as a company or as a person? Uh, yeah. What are the activities? Interesting that, company personality. Yeah, company personality. A company All has right. a pers a company culture. Um, right. uh, what is your what are the what are the activities that the company is involved in? What right. is the legacy of this company? What do they want to accomplish? Right. Um, what are the strengths of this company? And does the individual that you're trying to get to endorse you touch with these things? And if you answer those questions, then you can pick whoever you want. Really, it's up it's up to you to decide what, what, what you think is best. There's no universal standard for what is right or wrong, unless you are you know, <laughs> religious and you subscribe to a certain moral code, which is yours. You see, the, the yeah. moral code is also yours. Right, right now, we have so many people ha with so many different moral codes, which lead to so many different value sets. 
No. And so at a, at, a, at a brand level, what is your objective? And do you feel that the person that you're aligning yourself with or the influencer that you're aligning yourself with ties right. in with your brand vitals? And if they do, then go for it. Right. Now, staying off lot, uh, competition. <laughs> Nobody, uh, I don't know if competition is good. They say competition is good for business, but I don't know if everybody likes competition. But there's those people who will say, uh, if, if that person has done this today, for their brand to shine, then tomorrow I'm doing this. I'm taking an example of, uh, I think I saw it online, uh, there's like some sort of uh, Instagram exchange between, uh, I don't know if they're already celebrities, Amber Ray and uh, Vera Siddiq, of course, they're known for some certain things sure. uh, that are out there in the public. And then there's one of them who did a gender reveal via a helicopter, and then the other one came claiming, oh, you copied me, you used my style, you don't have money, you use witchcraft, nini, nini. So I was trying to compare, both of these people have huge numbers of followers mm -hmm. but then the other one is blaming this one for doing some certain things mm -hmm. is it is, is it possible to maintain healthy competition but yes we are in the same business same environment same clients but still we are objectively competing without having these you know brushing shoulders in a very you know negative way well in the, in, in publicity there's no such thing as negative publicity and as far as i'm concerned they both won you feel like they both won? 100%. Okay. They've absolutely won. And at the end of the day, it's, it's, all, it's a show. It's a show for, for you guys. It's a show for, for the masses to, to be entertained, to, be, to, be, to, to, to have something to talk about. We're here sitting in a, in a, in a program talking about them. They've won. Right. <laughs> you know? cool. That's the point. I see. They've, yeah. they've, they've accomplished what they needed to accomplish. Right. Um, and, and so you might see it because, you see, whether you're talking about competition or negativity or whatever, as long as you're talking, right. as long as you're talking, They've won. Right. That's the point. Now, it depends what do they, what do they want you to talk about. Right. So if our conversation now starts to veer into something negative and we start maybe insulting them and causing them some kind of reputational damage, then that's obviously negative and tarnishing their brand. But, yeah. you know, if we're just commenting on, if we're just providing social commentary, then I think they've accomplished what, what it is that they set to accomplish. And, you know, I know that I know one strategy in, 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 in public relations is to, is to engineer beefs and to to create um, uh, acrimony um, so that people have something to talk about especially if your if your brand is on the decline uh, you or let's say you want to launch a new show which I think one of those ladies has just done yeah. um, you want to have at least something that will that will bring the attention because now the attention is on both of them and then now you start to pick apart okay so what is what is this one doing and what is this one doing yeah. oh this one has a new show well, let me check it out the other one is on a billboard. You see, yeah, so now the, it you see now it drives numbers to the show. Right. Yeah, and that and and, and that's part of the the overall um, uh, strategy. Right. Interesting. And still on that celebrity vibe, uh, I, I saw you were working with Zari Hassan, ex. Let me call her ex-wife to Diamond Platinums. Uh, you were working with her. You guys were flying as well. I was like, wow, this is my nurse getting it big, bro. How did you get to that place? Now <laughs> you're working with some of these amazing people that we just read about them or we saw them in movies and TV. Sure. No, I think it was courtesy of the company that I was working for at the time. I think uh, they've done an amazing job of getting their, their, their brand out there. I was certainly part of assisting with that process. Uh, it's part of the work that we do to, to help uh, get brand visibility and, and stuff out there. And it was just a strategy that we, we deployed to try and you know, increase the, the, the visibility and the reach of, of, of this really, really um, great company that is doing amazing work in the uh, renovation and real estate space. Yeah, mm. so uh, uh, that aside, you're also in real estate professionally now? Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm still a communications person, so a lot of, so, some of my clients are in the real estate industry. Right. Correct. Now, uh, also talk about law. <laughs> you're a commercial lawyer. lawyer. Yes. Yeah. How, 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 do, how is that important? And, and why is it important even for uh, a business uh, that's competing or already out here to have you know, a person like you behind their brand. Sure. It certainly helps because at least, you know, law, law is all about risk mitigation. Right. Lawyers are the, the first people to tell you, don't go here, don't try this, don't, we're, we mitigate risk. So right. we're trained from, from, from very early on uh, to understand what's risky and what's not, what can you say, what can't you say. So from that perspective, it helps. But it also, and it also helps to know how far can you stretch something until you break, you break right. the law. You yeah. know what I mean? So you can, you can stay just within the lines of legality until you tip over. Right. Uh, so it's useful to have someone with that skill set uh, as part of your team. Um, the other thing is that lawyers uh, think laterally. Because, right. because in, for, for a lawyer, there's no right or wrong. 
Okay. It's, it's how you defend it. It's how you justify it. It's how you explain it. Um, and lawyers are very good at that. In fact, I think lawyers are, uh, and marketers are kind of in the same. Uh, I think that's why maybe for me the transition was, was, yeah. very, was very seamless. seamless I think yeah. uh, the ability to, to, to make sense of situation and to also stay calm. Because, right. because one of the things that they in teach adversity? you in law is yeah. that, you know, because one, there's no right or wrong. Uh, uh, well, there is right and there's wrong, but in terms of your 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 position, you must be able to to look at both sides. You like must being be able neutral, to remain neutral, but also understand what what the dynamics are on both sides. So what what that does is it teaches you to think it teaches you to think laterally. So most right. people, normal people, will take a position. This is right. my position, and and my position is my position, and I stand by it, and you can't move me from here. But lawyers can think best case and worst case, and be able yeah. to allow um, a, a view of, of all sides. So we're very good at scenario planning uh, and planning, you know, what, what kind of, uh, uh, if, if, if this happens, then what's the worst that will happen? If this happens, then what's the best that can happen? Right. So it's useful to have that, le that level of training as well. It has reminded me of uh, somebody who was saying, for example, uh, uh, a robber invaded my house mm -hmm. and they wanted to shoot, shoot and kill my wife and then it happens I also have a gun and I shoot them. If we go to court, will I be charged of murder or self-defense? Self sure. And it has just played in my <laughs> mind right now. Now, uh, let's talk about digital footprints. Um, there's, I think it's, uh, should be, let me not mention her name. <laughs> there's, there's somebody also online who had, uh, like before she became famous, she had commented on a certain celebrity's uh, drama somewhere else. Okay. And then her time came, she became famous, and then people were attacking her. Mm -hmm. And then this celebrity came and screenshotted that part and said, but six years ago you were the one who was insulting sure. me. Now, why can't you take the same hit I was taking? And it just taught me about, you know, online and digital footprint. Like, your online history will remain there for the rest of your life. Absolutely. Why is it important to take care of your digital footprints as a company, as an individual? It's very important because like, it, it's, tie, it's directly tied to your reputation. And so you must be able to have a daily audit or, or at least a, a regular audit of, of, your, of your online uh, uh, assets. And these are things that you've said, comments, things that you've shared, things that you've liked, things that you've endorsed, um, posts that you've made, articles you've written, uh, videos you've created because the internet doesn't forget. The internet is, is, is there and, it, and uh, as, as long as you have, you have an interaction with the internet, uh, someone will take that interaction for whatever it is that they think can be useful to them. Whether it damages you or not, it doesn't really matter because we're all in, we're in a competitive space. Everybody is trying to get ahead. So if they can take something that you have done and use it, then you know, you, you, there's, there's, it's, it's fair game. There's the, the laws. I mean, of course, we do have laws now on data protection, which is very important. We have laws on cyberbullying, which is also quite important. But outside of that, the court of public opinion is, is a free for all. We have a, we have a very robust uh, Twitter community here in Kenya, which doesn't really care. The minute right. something happens, you will, you will trend and it will go for as long as it, as it needs to go. And, 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 and you, as an individual, as a company, as an organization, have to be comfortable in whatever, if, if I put something out today, even this interview, whatever we're discussing, right. am I comfortable 10 years from now, someone watching this right. and, and making a decision about this, about me based on this conversation? Yeah. So always- Or calling you again. Absolutely. <laughs> in somewhere else. Think, yeah. think, think not just in, so my job is to make sure that people think not just in terms of now, because right. we can be very impulsive and emotional in the way we react online, but right. think also in terms of the future. If I'm not comfortable posting something today that can come and be used against me 10 years from now, then I'd rather not post it. Right. Think before you post. You know, those are, those are some, some of the fundamentals. But if I'm comfortable, if in the future I'm okay with whatever it is that people have to say about me, because why? Because my objective, I'm not trying to go for a government position. I'm not trying to be a whatever. Or I'm be just, in corporate. I, I, corporate yeah, or be in corporate. Absolutely. Right. If, I, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm just interested in... in in a, in a different career path because I know my why, then mm -hmm. I, I, can, I can post and interact the way I want freely without, without, uh, uh, without fear. Now, right. I must stress that you know, the, the term professional means that you subscribe to a code of conduct. So right. when you're considered a media professional, it right. means that the media code of conduct, the laws, the, the ethics, the, ethics yeah. the counsel as a journalist, maybe you have subscribed to a code as a lawyer, you subscribe to a code. As a right. doctor, you subscribe to a code. So then now you're considered a professional. 
because your profession is governed by rules and regulations, do's and don'ts. So as a professional, if you, if you know that you have certain do's and don'ts, then you absolutely must color within those lines even as you're interacting online. But if you're not a professional, yeah. which is why professionals are held to a higher standard. Right. When you say that I am a professional this, it means that right. I am tied to a code of conduct. conduct yeah. yeah, but prof non-professionals non can do whatever they want and, right. and have no consequences uh, for it. Right. And, 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 and that has reminded me of the, the African parenthood setup where you'll see some parents say, I don't want you to tune into that station. Shut it down. Let's switch a channel. Even when it, when it comes to matters politics uh, in, in the public domain, you'll see people say, hey, may I know that station? Uh, it, it, I feel like it gravitates to a certain agenda that I don't want my kids to tune in. Uh, why does it happen like that? Is it because it's, it's an already perspective that was set? The tone, like you mentioned, there's no right to wrong, but yet it's still there. Parents don't want their kids to tune into that station or tune into that program sure. because they feel like it might, you know, introduce, you know, different perspectives, values, or interfere with a certain, you know, uh, code of conduct, like you said. But why is it it's still happening, even though you mentioned there's no right or wrong? No, Remember I said that we, everyone has vitals, huh? everyone has right. values, interests, personality or temperament, uh, activities, legacy and strengths. People have um, vitals and, and, and I'm speaking as a parent. I have certain values that I want my children to subscribe to right. and I, I, I'm, I'm very clear on those, on those, value, on those values and uh, uh, whatever it is that they're consuming, uh, whatever it is that they're doing, however it is that they're <coughs> behaving, I would like them to subscribe to a certain value system. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm well within my rights as a parent to, to do that. So right. if, 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 if a parent decides that they would like their household that they're paying for right. to, to move in a particular direction, then that's it. There's, and and this, this, this applies to companies, this applies to anybody who is in a position of authority. Um, even this institution, if this, this institution has certain values that, right. they, that they maintain and say that, you know, remember values are non-negotiables. No. Values are, are not something to debate. Uh, when, right. if, if this is my value system, this is my value no, system. We're not debate. This is not a, yeah. a discussion point. Um, yeah. And and so if, if, if for for that person at an individual level, they have the right to control whatever they can within their control, which is their children. But yeah. outside of that, you cannot impose your values on other people. You can try and influence. You can try and create a brand that will pull people because brand is not about force. It's not pushing. It's pulling. It's magnetic. Yeah. It's it's charisma. It's bringing people in, in in a in a subtle way using influence, using communication, using top of mind, using uh, reputation, and many of these other tools and strategies that we that we work on. Right. So you can't really force your va you can't impose your value system on people. And right. and you know there's a global trend right now of 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 competing value sy systems. So many people have different values that they subscribe to. They believe in. Uh, and and it's up to it's up to you to decide mm, in the in the supermarket of values which one do I like, right. and you find people who like maybe today I'll pick this one I'll yeah. drop it I'll pick this one that's not really a value because then you're wishy washy you're 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 flaky and you're not yeah. you can't really be taken Look seriously. Warm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, still on that, uh, uh, we've seen, for example, uh, they say a lot that the corporate world is very cutthroat. And of course, if you're in that space, you must maintain a certain image as we close. Uh, for example, somebody went and vented online and uh, the company felt like, hey, since you went online and vented, uh, I don't think we can keep you with that kind of, you know, venting. But this person just used their social media to to or share their emotions or what they feel or maybe a perspective on a certain let's say issue that maybe that company doesn't you know um, gravitate towards why should they let go of this person and yet they just made use of their social media and yet their input in the company is still valid and profitable it's back to values right you know values values trump money values trump everything it, 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 if my values and your values are not aligning and i think that's the, that's 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 a conversation that has to be had with influencers right from the beginning influencers uh, mostly yeah are our our values aligned do we have a similar uh, direction that we that we are moving 
towards. Because if you if you do something on your social media or say something, can I stand by that as 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 a company that has that you have endorsed? And if I can't stand by that, it doesn't matter how many people you're bringing to the table. We've seen many many big celebrities who've been dropped by by by, by companies. Levels, yeah, yeah you, you look at Kanye West and, uh, and and Tiger Woods before that, and many many other examples of yeah. people who I mean, Kanye West had probably the most the most uh, sales of an influencer and endorsement that Adidas had ever seen, ever. Right. Yet they dropped him at the, you know, because their values were not aligned. Because he went publicly and used his social media the to comment. dropped though. To comment on on other things. The numbers dropped. The numbers dropped. But you yeah. see, it, it, there, there are certain things that go beyond money. Okay. Um, and and if you have a value system, then that's that's a that's really a, a, an, an admirable thing. Um, but if your value system is money, then I guess it doesn't really matter. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. I, I think I'd love us to bring uh, to a close that conversation. But uh, talk about any projects, any consultancy packages that you're offering, uh, just in case uh, for a person who'd want to come and seek your sure. services. What are some of the things that you're ready to offer them? And maybe if you have a number, an email, social media, you can share sure. your camera. Yeah, yeah. so I'm, I'm, I'm on Mr. Munesi on, on Twitter and, and IG. Uh, and, and LinkedIn as well. And we, have, we actually have a, a program, uh, a career summit happening next week with the likes of uh, Vusi Tembekwayo and, uh, and a couple of other ex ex exciting names. Uh, my dear friend Joanne, the career coach, will also be doing some, we'll be working together with that. It's actually uh, her who's driving the project. So if anyone wants to interact with that, that's uh, next week, God willing, uh, from the 27th. Uh, but my day job remains uh, as an image and, and, and performance consultant for companies, organizations, and individuals worldwide. Yeah, email, social media? Uh, yeah, so uh, Mr. Munesi at, on, on Instagram and Mr. Dot Munesi at on Twitter. So Mr. Dot Munesi Instagram, Mr. Dot Munesi on, on uh, Twitter, and uh, Munesi Musalia on LinkedIn. Right, I know you can't give out your number, but it's all right. Definitely <laughs> not. All right, <laughs> we have been speaking to Munesi Musalia, who is an image and behavior consultant. Thank you so much for coming through. Thank you for having and welcome me. Welcome back. Please come back once again. Thank you, Brian. You're doing oh. a great job. You're welcome. Thank you so mm. much. Oh, that's the biggest highlight for <laughs> me for the day. All right, we're going to take a very short break, but you can continue to interact with us, by the way, on our socials, and uh, that is at Y254 channel on the hashtag Y in the morning. And Brian Soko 101 is mine. Definitely, uh, Vinyl will be coming up next with the next segment. I wish you well. <laughs>